In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I turned some of this C630 nickel aluminum bronze into a 14 inch Bowie knife with a work hardened edge. This stuff's actually extremely strong and at the end of the video, I'm gonna test it out to see how well it holds up. I cast this knife and my original plan was to use this cheap Bowie knife that I got online, but it actually ended up being way too thin to use as a pattern. So what I ended up doing is making my own pattern out of a piece of aluminum plate. It is a little bit thicker than the knife, so hopefully that'll allow the metal to flow all the way into the mold before it solidifies. The trade-off is that it will be a little bit heavier, but hopefully it won't be too bad. If you've ever filed aluminum, you know it can be extremely difficult because it clogs files. I just discovered that this Japanese saw rasp works extremely well, so if you ever file aluminum, keep that in mind. Next, I'm going to drill a couple holes in the handle. I will be casting the blade and handle together in one piece, so it doesn't really matter where these holes are. I'm just going to use them as a way to attach a couple 3D printed handles. What does matter is that I know the exact distance between the holes. That way I can take a picture of this pattern, import it into Fusion 360, and calibrate its size using that distance. Then I can make a 3D model and work off of that to design a couple handles. I'll 3D print these using my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D printer. This machine was generously supplied by Bamboo Lab for the channel, and I've been using it for a few weeks now, and I can honestly say it's an extremely impressive machine, and I highly recommend checking them out if you want a 3D printer that just works extremely well out of the box. If you'd like to take a look at them, I'll have some affiliate links in the description. Now all I have to do is glue these pieces on and start making a mold. I'll make this mold using my favorite casting sand, Petrobond. It holds together really well and it does a really good job at capturing detail and patterns. I did put a tiny bit of draft on the blade itself to help with releasing it from the sand, but honestly I don't even think it's necessary for a pattern like this. This is a fairly simple mold, but I have to make sure that the casting doesn't shrink when it solidifies, so I'm adding these really large holes, which are called risers. They'll supply the main casting with molten metal as it solidifies and shrinks, and aluminum bronze shrinks a lot when it solidifies, so these risers really need to be large. I'm using the C630 Nickel Aluminum Bronze. I recently made a hatchet out of this metal and it's extremely strong. This amount of metal should take about an hour to melt in my furnace. Once it reaches its melting point, I let it go a few hundred degrees over that so it's nice and liquid and hopefully it'll fill the mold completely without solidifying. Check out those really cool colors. Aluminum bronze usually does this as the castings are cooling down, 
Unfortunately the colors won't stick around, but they're really cool to look at. I usually give castings this size quite a while to cool down, otherwise if I open it up too quickly, the smoke will actually catch fire, and that's something I learned the hard way. I gotta say, this was a pretty disappointing result. I wasn't expecting it to look so rough, but I think I can make it work. Aluminum bronze can be tricky to cast with because it forms an oxide layer on the top surface, which can prevent the mold from filling out properly. You can also see where it's slightly solidified before reaching every part of the mold, and that's something I was worried about. I know this thing looks really heavy, but it's actually not that bad. Aluminum bronze isn't all that heavy compared to the other bronzes, which makes sense considering there's a lot of aluminum in it. The rest of the knife is completely solid except for this one area here, and that's actually called a cold shut. It's where two pieces of molten metal came together but didn't quite mix together before they solidified. So that's why I'm going to weld it, but before I can weld it, I need to make some welding rod. So I got some excess metal from the casting and I hammered it out, and then I cut it into strips, and that actually worked extremely well. And before I used them for welding, I cleaned them up with a little bit of acetone. Well this is actually a pretty solid weld, so it should hold up just fine. Now I need to start cleaning up the blade. I decided not to spend a bunch of time trying to make this casting look as nice as possible because it was pretty rough to begin with. I was a little bit worried about how I was going to grind the bevels into the blade. I've never done any knife grinding like this before, and I know it can be extremely difficult to get it right, so I didn't want to make a huge mess of it. But I decided to just dive in and go for it. I will be grinding the bevels freehand, but to help out I did make this little guide. Hopefully it'll just help with keeping the plunge grinds even on both sides. Well there was a point while grinding this that I thought I completely messed it up, but I eventually started to get a feel for it and, well they're actually not as bad as I was expecting. They're not winning any awards, but for my very first try, I'm actually really happy with them. With that done, now I just have to work hard in the edge. This will crush the crystalline structure of the metal and make it a lot tougher. Hopefully that means it'll keep an edge for longer. Once I was done work hardening it, I used a couple different belts to get it as sharp as I can and now it's ready for testing. I guess I'll start out with the obligatory paper test. I can tell that there's a dull spot on the blade which is catching on the paper, but for the most part it's actually cutting really well. The real test will be to cut some pieces of wood and then try the paper test again. I'll start by chopping this 2x4. Well the blade looks fine, but let's see if it'll still cut the paper. I really can't tell any difference, so I think this soft wood didn't dull it at all.
Here's a piece of hard maple that I tested my bronze hatchets on. I wonder if this will dull the knife. Again, the blade looks fine, but it might be slightly dull. I could just be imagining it, but I think it's having a slightly harder time getting through the paper. Either way, I'm super impressed with this nickel aluminum bronze alloy. I'm not really surprised it held up so well because the aluminum bronze hatchet that I made with the same alloy held up extremely well, but it was a fun experiment. Maybe I'll have to make a sword next. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then let me know what you think in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for future projects. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.